How's it going, guys? It is 12.59 a.m. Thursday, 16th of March. Here in Japan, we have a medium difficulty question, medium slash hard question for repro, step one, family medicine, 2CK, and surgery. Nearly identical question shows up on one of the step one NBME forms. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, mehl man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. And start the clip. 40 year old man, type 2 diabetes, one month history of swelling around his eyes, ankles, and of his left testicle. Cryonine one year ago, 2.3 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 0 0.7 to 1.2. Once you've hit a cryonine of 2, you've lost about 90% of your renal function. So this means he clearly has poor renal function. BMI 32, physical exam shows periorbital peripheral edema. He reports a viral upper respiratory tract infection two months ago. Question wants to know uh, which the following is most likely, likely explanation for his findings. So let's just hop to the answer choices. Choice A, Fournier syndrome, aka Fournier gangrene or Fournier gangrene, wrong fucking answer. This shows up on surgery forms, okay? It, it shows up once. Actually, this is a bit of a, an overblown diagnosis, something you, you should be aware of though, which is gangrene of the perineum slash scrotum in severe diabetes. Of course, they're going to occur in women as well, but it's classically older male diabetics, okay? And they'll just give you black skin of the perineum, and you're like, no idea what's going on here. It's just Fournier gangrene, and the answer is going to be debridement of the necrotic tissue on the TCK surgery form. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hydrosteel, wrong fucking answer. So this is going to be a kid under the age of one, who has a testicular swelling that transilluminates, okay? And this is embryologically, they want you to know this is due to a, due to a patent processes vaginalis, which is an evagination of the peritoneal cavity into the scrotum. Indirect inguinal hernias will herniate through the patent processes vaginalis as well. This is what you need to know. For pediatrics, you're not going to treat this under the age of one. Okay, that's your high yield banger right there. Students are like, OMG, do surgical closure. Wrong fucking answer. You're going to observe up to the angel one. Choice C, orchitis, wrong answer. All you need to know for you is simile. So this is inflammation of a testis. This is going to be mumps, okay? So mumps is of your paramyxoviridae, mumps, measles, uh, RSV, paramyxovirus. So paramyxoviridae, viridae means family. So this is mumps, okay? Not dramatic. So POM, P-O-M. So mumps causes parotitis, orchitis, meningitis. Of course, orchitis can be bacterial, but for you, it's really non-existent, just mumps. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, spermatocele, wrong answer. Non-existent diagnosis on USMLA. I don't think I've ever seen this assessed once uh, for step one and two NBME material combined. Okay, so in theory, within the epididymis, which is a coiled structure that connects the seminiferous tubules of the testes to the vas deferens, where sperm are transported, you can get a collection of sperm. Okay, with increased fluid production, you don't treat this. Okay, I did some reading up on Google before making this question here. They just say you don't treat it. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, torsion of appendix testis, wrong answer. So this is not the same as torsion of testis, okay? However, torsion of appendix testis, holy shit, this shows up on one of the pediatrics forms. So you need to know that this is going to cause a blue dot sign which will be a bluish discoloration of the superior testis, and they will tell you that the cremasteric reflex is intact. Okay, so normally for torsion of testis, you're going to have an absent cremasteric reflex, which is going to be palpation of the inner thigh slash scrotum. You get retraction of the testis. Uh, that's, class that's classically torsion of testis, whereas epididymitis, you will have an intact cremasteric reflex. Well, holy shit, they're going to give you a peds question where they say, a kid has a bluish discoloration of the testis. You're like, sounds like torsion, but they say the cremasteric reflex is intact. Kid can be afebrile, okay? That's just torsion of appendix testis. I'm letting you know it exists. Wrong fucking answer. Choice F, varicocele, correct answer. So a student within our Telegram group a few days ago posted similar NBME question, and I thought it was pretty solid, okay? I like this question from NBME, which is you got a diabetic who has 
nephrotic syndrome. Okay, they're pushing this on you. Now, I just threw in this upper respiratory tract infection. It's unrelated. Okay, I mean, obviously, viral infections, if it were PEDS, minimal change disease as an example, but presumably we just have diabetic glomerulus sclerosis, important cause of nephrotic syndrome. And so he's got periorbital peripheral edema. And you need to know this is the high yield point that nephrotic syndrome, loss of size and charge barrier, you're losing non-specifically lots of different proteins, including antithrombin-3, which can make you hypercoagulable. So what NBME will do is they'll give you the same fucking question and they'll give you a DVT. Or they'll give you the same fucking question and they'll say superficial thrombophlebitis guy has a painful one centimeter palpable cord at the ankle that may or may not track up to the knee, okay? Or they give you varicocele, okay? So if you have, in theory, thrombus accretion, so if you, you can get renal vein thrombosis. So if you get thrombus accretion within one of the renal veins, the left renal vein, then you're at increased risk for varicocele, okay? So you need to know that the testicular vein on the left enters 90 degree angle into the left renal vein, which then goes to the IVC, whereas on the right side, you don't get varicoceles often because the testicular vein on the right goes straight to the IVC, okay? There is a bilateral varicocele question on one of the NBME forms somewhere. Weird fucking question. I'm letting you know it exists because it's always a what the fuck question. But your take home for this, okay, your short point of consolidation is that nephrotic syndrome can cause hypercoagulable state due to loss of antithrombin-3 in the urine, DVT, superficial thrombophlebitis, renal vein thrombosis, and you can get a varicocele as a result. You know the deal to make more content if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.